Hey everyone, Jesse Bergman. And I'm John Kimmel. And obviously we're Punch and Entertainment. You've seen us once or twice before. Uh, in this video here today, we're just wanting to do... Take two. Take two. Because <laughs> <laughs> our GoPro had some technical difficulties uh, the last time, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this video is going to come out probably about a week before the Kickstarter ends. Yeah. So we're recording a little bit early, but... Um, Basically, wanted to just do a quick update on our current status for Kickstarter, John. Yeah. And so, uh, as of the recording time, we're almost 75% funded, and so we can't thank all of you backers enough. I mean, we really, really appreciate everybody that's shown support for us up to this point, uh, has pledged to us, has you know really gotten behind the project, and is really excited to see us succeed. We we can't uh, even words just don't have enough meaning to, to that right I mean like there's no words there's just no words I'm, I'm, I mean I'm literally speechless yeah. so it's for me is saying something yeah, I'm never right? speechless yeah. uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of the things we we updated on Kickstarter John so so this week well and in particular the sense of you know this launch we've done quite a number of things but you've been primarily doing all of our updates in terms of writing the updates and bringing yeah. new content yeah. and things like that so so uh, in, re in regards to updates you know where to begin we we've had almost an update every day right and uh, each day when we respond it's kind of our way of it's either a thank you for the feedback that we've right. gotten and sometimes that feedback uh, well it's, it's really helped us along the ways with how our, our page is presented on Kickstarter right uh, we've, we've talked about it's like deja vu we've talked about how <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about how uh, We've done a lot of research, obviously, prior to launching our game, what we thought was the best way to present Battle for Solaria on Kickstarter. Right. And what we learned is that um, things change rapidly on Kickstarter. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's interesting, right? So we, we, one of the things that we probably missed the, the mark on early was uh, revealing the stretch goals. Right. And maybe and some and clarity goes, on our yeah, pledges to stretch that, goals. Right? So let's, let's talk about those a little bit and what that is. We were trying to be somewhat like keep a little bit of a mystery, keep some fun, engaging elements, giving you a reason to come back to our page by revealing them as they unlock. Right. Well, got to get to them before you can unlock them, right? So it's like we need to give some incentive as to what are these things. And so early on, uh, when we first launched, we had stretch goals. It just literally we we teased up to eight, right? And we teased that uh, well, the first one was like a seventeen five for an unlock and. It was going to be a card, but right. that, we didn't show the card. We just said unlock. It looked like a card, so there was an assumption that it was a card. Right. Well, eh, good assumption. Right. Um, but yeah. the feedback was, we want to see more of what the stretch goals what, are, what they are. Right. So uh, we revealed that um, there was some concern that the new recruit level didn't have a lot of stretch, stretch goals, goals in it. Right. Uh, for them, and so we wanted to clarify that at least initially, our first seven of eight. Would, would apply would be applicable to right. to the new recruits. So we 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 revealed that we mm -hmm. revealed the dollar figures of what we'd have to stretch to reveal stretch right. one through seven, uh, and then we also uh, showed what one and two stretch goals were. Right. right? Uh, that it was Animus Vox and Venerus the Wolf. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about really quick. I mean, yeah. I, uh, there's obviously eight levels of stretch goals, right? So the first six levels are all alternate of promo. Code. That's right. correct. So they're, they're promo cards that will be different artwork from what's in the base battle kit. Correct. Um, okay, so we, we've shown now, we actually have the artwork. Yeah, which is, this is like now, the right? third uh, upgrade for our stretch goal preview. Right. So we went from no nothing to except for uh, stretch goal one, then right. we went to stretch goal two with still question marks for the rest of them, but we showed the dollar figures. Now we fully... We've shown you everything right. from one through eight now. We've literally laid it all out on yeah. the table, right? So There's no so, surprise. You know exactly what you're shooting right. for. So obviously if you're looking at our Kickstarter page or if you go back and look at our Kickstarter page, you'll see that uh, we have art for the first two already Correct. done, right? Because we kind of went preemptive on that a little bit. And we thought, I bet we'll at least do this. We hoped. We yeah. hoped, right. So we went ahead and took the investment and, and made those promo cards right away uh, just so they'd be prepared um, end, of, end of the day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, but we didn't do that for the other stretch goals for obvious reasons. Art's very expensive, and and so we had to you know figure out what was best to put our funds into while we right. were doing this Kickstarter. And, and so there are still four more cards that we'll have to commission art for as we stretch into them. But that's right. But the seventh goal is pretty exciting, right? I mean, the seventh goal. Yeah. The seventh goal is a, a, a pack of cards. It's right. it's thirty six new cards, nine unique cards, yep. full play sets of each one, yep. and it features the the mercenaries of Solaria, right? Right. I mean, right. Some well, of them. 
some of the the, the combatants of the mercenaries. Yeah. You know, we you've seen a few of our tactic cards mm -hmm. uh, in the battle in the battle kit one or right. battle, uh, battle begins. Um, but yeah, we're you're able to now. We've had a lot of people ask, are there bounty hunters in your game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's, merc there's bounty hunters and the mercenaries. Yeah, and they're pretty awesome. Yeah, aren't they? I mean, yeah. They're, if I can go, if I can say it. If, rating for everybody I guess they're pretty badass I yeah mean, yeah uh, the bounty hunters from Solaria that, that are going to be in this initial pack of, of cards is uh, they, they are uh, kind of modeled after our testers right I mean like we kind of took the personalities yeah. that our testers have that they play different games with and we uh, created cards for them um, and they're really our core testers for sure the guys right. that have shown up for pretty much almost two years now yeah. straight um, and, and have really been part of the development of this game. And they are 100% their personas, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, and if you could figure out a way to bring Frank or Kent or Matt into, yeah. or you for yeah. that matter, because yeah. we actually have a card that's your yeah. uh, your persona as well. Yeah. Um, it, they're exactly what you guys would have, especially when you look at other games that you guys have played right. and influenced and, by them. So. And, and just to kind of to explain that just a little bit further, so uh, you know we play a lot of video games, MMOs, various other RPG type games, right. and uh, we always kind of gravitate towards a class, if you will, of right. a character type. So that that's kind of what we're talking about. Is our bounty hunters kind of represent the class that we like to identify play with and so, identify with? Yeah. So we still haven't revealed my secret card, though. My secret card is. Never gonna probably see the light of day, <laughs> but he he's uh, he's pretty powerful in the world of Solaria. That's well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but but John and, and, and all of those guys, obviously, I, I kind of have a I kind of have two hundred and sixty two cards already designed in my in my right. own you know in my own uh, way. So so basically, um, you know, John and I really are excited to get that, and, and we get to that at uh, forty thousand, if I'm correct, right? For, uh, for the mercenary pack, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the mercenary pack gets us there at forty thousand, and then we turn around and we talk a little bit about how do we, uh, we we go to the eighth stretch goal, and the eighth stretch goal is when officer above officer pledges and above become relevant because yeah. at that stretch yeah. goal they automatically get the eighth stretch goal and all subsequent ones. Right, sure, sure. But yeah, we yeah. didn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. So. No, no. So so any, anything if we if we end up with a ninth stretch goal or a tenth stretch goal or whatever that may be. Uh, our officer above pledges are all going to get those automatically. Yeah. Um, the the new recruit pledges at that point would need to upgrade, right? I mean that's what we're basically telling. And so when we first started, uh, there was some confusion about that, and I definitely wish we would have been a little clearer on that in the beginning. I think yeah, we're trying to keep a level of mystery and excitement and intrigue. And, yeah. and I, I think I think we would have been better off waiting a little bit to talk about that eighth stretch goal and just left it out of the initial stretch yeah. goals at the, yeah. in the beginning. Um, but you know, hey, you live and you learn, and so. That's one of the things that we definitely wanted to clarify for all of our new recruit pledges is you're getting some really awesome stuff at that $25 yeah. uh, price point. Um, and so then we also added in, since the start of the Kickstarter, some playmats, right? And so in fact, we even had the mercenaries smuggle a playmat into yeah, our Yeah, some, play some contraband <laughs> got smuggled in. So not only did yeah. they uh, sneak their playmat in from the social achievement stretches to uh, the actual add-ons, and then they also brought in another shipment of additional play mats for all the other factions that we already had on there. So uh, not only can you get access at the normal twenty-five dollar uh, rate for the mercenary uh, play mat, you can now get a bundled uh, special where you can get uh, any combination of four uh, of our play mats to get basically a twenty percent off. Right, so, so they're all twenty bucks a piece. It's or eighty dollars. Eighty dollars for four play mats, yeah. which I think is kind of cool. I mean, maybe our backers don't agree, but. If you don't, let us know. Well, we, I mean, we did yeah. kind of in response to what they asked, so I think yeah. I'm pretty sure they <laughs> like it. Okay. But, but basically, uh, what we what we were finding out is, that is backers really wanted to have some Kickstarter exclusive stuff. So those those art play mats that are on there, those are Kickstarter exclusive mats. Meaning, once we're done with Kickstarter, we're not going to do those again in that in that format. format right? Yeah. So, yeah, so they'll be the ones that say Kickstarter edition on them, and that's that's, that's the that, only time yeah. we'll ever do that. You, yeah. well, you might see a you might see a Lord Fenris play mat or a Solari uh, excavator play mat. Um, but it'll but, be different. But, but it'll be math. composed differently. It'll be a different graphic design. Right. Uh, they won't say obviously Kickstarter edition like those faction specific ones. And then going back to, I, I actually do think we say literally on the uh, the demo version of uh -huh. Playmat that those are exclusive. Like okay. that's that's it. That's it. Uh, so that's so it for so the demo mat's a little version. bit. Demo mat is actually the version of the mat that we use. 
when you go out to a demo to teach, right? It has all the it's different the, zones of yeah, play, and it yeah. has the, the the text rules for those zones and, and a we few do, other things. So we yeah. take the text rules off. We those. have we have the uh, we we have a naked version, uh -huh. and then we have the play zone version that has the zones and the title of the zone. Okay, but uh, our very original play maps had, a lot had of minutia, wording. Right. Basically, that wording exists on just those for our, for literally our demos because early on we didn't have the, the rules on a right. uh, clearly Clear defined, down. and that was our way of trying to address that. And we've modified some things, and we were concerned at the time uh, that if we had the same wording that we had on our orig the original play mats that are demo our demo mats, mm -hmm. there would be some confusion. In our, uh, Rule issues. Sure. So, so, so they're they're like they're, the ones we've been using. We call them a demo because they are the artwork is only used for right. the demo. So. so, so if you've been to a demo of ours, maybe you saw us at Origins, or maybe you saw us at Gamma, or yeah. one of the bigger shows around. Uh, you you've seen that map, but you've seen that map with wording, right? So a we lot wanted of to, we wanted to clarify that because yeah. we didn't have a rules guide at that time. Like when we first started demoing a little over a year ago, or almost yeah. a year ago. We now, were the rules. We were the rules, yeah. I mean, and, and so the play map was a point of reference for us yeah. to be able to point to somebody and say, well, this is how you do this, and this is how you do this. Right. And, and so it was really about that for us. And, and so I really want to make sure that our backers understood that because I think there was some question from people who had seen our demos about whether or not this was the same map we were it's, using. It's not 100% exact. But it's, a, it's, it's, a, the, it's in the same Yeah, image, it's yeah. like, a, I don't know, if you saw a prototype car and then that's the new model year, but they always make a slight tweak. Yes. It's, yeah, it makes sense. It's the, it's makes the sense. thing. It, it is the demo map, but it, the version we have on Kickstarter is slightly different because that right. wording just wasn't accurate anymore. So, so one of the other things that we learned quite a bit about uh, our game, and in particular going into Kickstarter, was is that you guys all demanded a lot more modes of play than what we thought. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, so we had been working on different modes of play for a right. while, but we weren't necessarily 100% saying let's put these out to the public yet because we 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 have a, a, a certain adherence to quality here at Punch It that we want to maintain yeah. and we definitely don't want to just put stuff out without uh, being comfortable but we were pretty far along in some of the play testing for some of these things right so and, and so we kind of felt like it was okay it was okay yeah. to go ahead and and kind of lift the veil off a couple of modes and we have more modes let's let's yeah. be very clear about that there are more modes of play in this battle kit but we're not ready to talk about talking those about yet. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm pulling a big giant publisher move here and saying, yeah. oh, we got more stuff coming, but we haven't told and, you about and, it and yet. It's like, like you actually, you have it. It's not like you can buy anything else no. to play that mode. No. It's in the starter kit. It's in the, yeah, for sure. So we, we're not releasing the rules on that yet. Right, because we just want some time to really understand what's a good, clean way to present our game in that way. Yeah. And so it's important to us that we we be very clear about that. So what we were able to release and what we were really comfortable releasing was four player draft mode, which is super yeah. exciting, yeah. obviously. Yeah. We were, we knew draft is a huge part and component of card games. It uh, was something that, uh, you know, we knew we weren't gonna be ignore, able to ignore forever. We had talked right. a lot about it uh, and we had done some play testing with it and we ultimately found that in a base battle kit, we can support four player draft, which, That's correct. which is awesome. I mean, we, we definitely had concerns that the, the ratios, of, you know, maybe wouldn't work out and we actually found that it's a really good mix it, and creates a pretty exciting <laughs> format right it's completely different yeah, and kind of yeah. flips what you know about battle for Solaria kind of on its head a little bit and says hey this is totally different so now it's almost almost feels like a different game sometimes when you play right. it in that mode yeah i mean the the mechanics are almost exactly the same it's just how the factions interact a little bit mm -hmm. uh in our constructed format you play one faction, one faction. plus right. maybe a mercenary, mercenary option right. In our draft format, you can play up to two factions right. with mercenaries. With mercenaries, yep. And uh, Solarium is not faction specific. Right. Influence isn't faction specific. Right. Uh, but and we don't you don't build a deck based on the sixty ninety rule. Right. You just have to have at least forty cards in your deck. In your deck. And we suggest a, a a third ratio. So a third of your forty cards are combatants. A third right. are uh, sites, and a third are tactic conditions. If you're fortunate enough to get that in your draft. Uh, that's that's what yeah. you shoot for. But we've definitely seen people that have have been successful with more sites oh, or yeah, more combatants I, or I mean so there, there's some interesting. More sites, it wins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say yeah. I mean I'd say you, you definitely if you can draft sites yeah. and, and the right combatants to, to yeah. go with those sites you're okay. But if you if you go heavy to site draft and yeah. then you end up without the the support yeah. you you 
really don't have I, a I'm way. always the guy that I typically err on the side of caution, which is funny because in our constructive play deck, I always go more for conditions and tactics and then combatants and sites usually last. Yeah. Sometimes I'm sight starved. And uh, I'm like, well, I don't know why, but I felt when we drafted, I don't want to be sight starved. Yeah. And so I, every time I saw a sight, well, I just. Because I'm the opposite in constructive play, right? When I play constructive, yeah, you play a I, ton play, of I, add a, I add more sights typically than other players do yeah. because I felt like that was a way of making sure that whatever I got, I could play. Yeah. And, and uh, I definitely saw in constructive play maybe that, that mindset doesn't always pay off. Um, but in draft play, it, it, it does. But I don't, I'm not going to say it, it always will. No, but no. I think it helps. I mean, it if helps. you have the right, if you have the right combatants to support that build, yeah. then you're okay. But if you don't, I think you could get yourself into trouble. Where it's the same thing I experienced in constructed, which is where lots of sites and nothing to do with them. That's right. And, and so and I, I have, did run into that a little bit. Like yeah. I, I would, I went through. A, I think what saves us in both modes, our constructed and our draft play, we can still draw two cards. Right. And that saved. me me a little bit because there were times I, I was burying sites in my influence row. Right. I was having a handful of sites and I was I was top decking into combatants. So it's, you know. that's typical. I mean that's card game stuff. So right. I mean I definitely think that there's some some merit to that. And we also found you know in play testing that there's uh, definitely uh, the point system and, and picking the, the three point cards or even the four point cards don't necessarily equate to. Winning. Yeah, in yeah. fact, uh, we we went into our draft play testing with the idea that well, if we originally had a 60-90, let's make this a 40-60. Right. And we just we knew that in the back of our head that maybe what it comes out and sure enough, we all of all of the guys that play tested maintained within a real, about 5 points. Yeah, right? they yeah. were either like it was either spot on 40-60 or 40-65. I think a one we had a couple of players that ended up through our testing ended up at that 65 point a few times. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting, but um, you know, so again, kind of kind of draft play is definitely a different mode of play. I don't recommend it to a new player. If you're getting started in Battle for Slayer, don't go out and try to draft right well, away. Unless, I mean, well, unless you're I, I really feeling comfortable. But I think or have done draft a lot. Like yeah. some guys just like you know, to yeah. be honest, Magic guys that draft, yeah, they'll pick up on it. Sure, I, cool. I agree. I think you could probably hop, cobble through a draft a couple of times. As a new player, if you if you had a lot of card game experience, yeah. but I still think there's merit to taking the base starter deck oh, and just I, I learning the mechanics oh, yeah, I before def- you for sure before you run yeah. into that. So then, kind of talking about our Kickstarter and kind of coming back full circle, we we these are all things we learned in the in this, and so one of the things we're we're getting ready to launch and um, at the time of this recording is refer a friend, and so refer a friend is really about we look at the math for our Kickstarter and that's 75 percent funded as of yeah. time of this recording. Yeah. If we can get everybody that's already backed us to find one friend, and we all have a gaming group, right? We all we all play in gaming groups. John, you and I are in gaming groups all the time. We have different other people that join us at times, and and uh, that one friend can make all the difference in us getting the funding even beforehand, and possibly even getting to some stretch goals, which would be really awesome right. for us. So, and and for you as backers, because ultimately those uh, stretch goals are are pretty cool, and. Uh, so, so what I'm basically saying is, is with Refer Friend, we want to create some incentive. And so, John, you kind of came up with this idea that, you know, we have all these demo cards and prototype cards and even test cards yeah. um, that have not been, that, that really aren't being used anymore. Maybe they, some of them are too beat up, to obviously. Use, right. But others are, are still in pretty good shape overall. Yeah. Um, so maybe they, they serve as some value to our backers. Right. So even though our game isn't a, a collectible card game, we all understand that the format of Kickstarter is to get some fun, exclusive stuff. So uh, we thought, well, we, we have we have a surplus of maybe not full sets, but we have a lot of we have black and white cards all the way to color cards. This and just color cards have art on them. Let's go ahead and, and you know this is our way of saying thank you and maybe give incentive uh, to our to our fans to go ahead and try to right. recruit their their friends. So it gives us an opportunity to uh, to maybe kind of feed that. Ex- exclusivity. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would say collectability, even yeah. to some degree, without being a collectible game. Right, and we are uh, actually Jesse and I will be autographing, all, right. signing all those cards. So, uh, just to kind of go full circle with that, for every friend that you have back us at the twenty-five dollar, which is the new recruiter hire, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we can see that in our Kickstarter uh, dashboard. Right, uh, we can confirm that it was your friend and vice versa, and. Uh, You'll get a card for every friend that you recruit, and right. we'll sign that card. Now, I, I put a little excerpt at the bottom, like, 
this is not going to go with the release of everything yeah, I don't else. Think it's this will be, be something that we release. can get to you when we can get it. Right. And uh, it'll probably come standard mail to you. Right. And uh, we may even air. We, or, or air, maybe. I said we might have one card less. Sorry. Uh, but there's a good chance you might get a few extra cards. Right. It just and and uh, maybe a special thank you just because right. you, you recruited so many friends. Right. So the, the way this works, just to make sure it's really clear, um, if you've already backed us on Kickstarter yep. and you've already referred a friend, yep. first off, send us a message with who the friend is that you referred, yep. the name of that, their and Kickstarter username. And we can confirm that. And then we can confirm it. Yep. And then once it's confirmed, then you'll be down for one of these. Yeah, uh, for every settings. friend, you get a card. Yeah, so every time you do it, we'll, we'll add another card to that mix. And then going forward, if you're just coming into our Kickstarter and you've yep. got friends, uh, in fact, the board game group's doing a challenge right now where they're challenging people to games yeah, of Battle yeah, yeah. So this is a great opportunity, right? So if one of those guys backs and they've challenged a friend to a game of Battle for Solaria, maybe their friend needs to pick up a copy of the game too. Yeah. That serves as a refer friend and it can kind of keep working its way down the line. But again, all we're saying is, is that with, with the current numbers we have on Kickstarter, if each and every person brought one friend to the game, just one, we'd be funded and we'd probably be at some stretch goals. Yeah, but especially after the last couple of days. Yeah, exactly. We've had a phenomenal response with, we, we you know, this is take two, and uh, <laughs> we had actually done a call earlier. I don't think we've done it yet. Nice version, but uh, uh, startup. Yeah, no yeah. Problem. So, so basically, we we live in a really uh, kind of progressive community for startups. Yeah, and definitely tech, more tech oriented. And so we've kind of broken the mold a little bit. We didn't know how they would respond, but Startup Nebraska has just been phenomenal with us, yeah. and, and and they have really embraced what we're doing as a company, trying to get off the ground. And they've they've kind of spread the word about our yeah. game all over the country, and they brought in a lot of people that are, yeah. I mean that are involved in startup communities from each coast and and, and stuff like that. And, and so it's been really exciting for us to see those people kind of uh, dive into something that's a little more low tech than what they're used right. to. Yeah. But they're definitely really big supporters of what we're doing. So we're definitely thankful for everybody from the startup Nebraska community, and then all of their friends that have have come in sure. to help us as well. So they, they've really picked up momentum for us and helped us move forward with uh, getting this game closer to funding. And a number of friends at Turbine Flats, right? Yeah, Turbine like, Flats has been a huge proponent for us. Those guys are awesome. Uh, Turbine <laughs> Flats guys are awesome. Fuse Coworking, everybody over there is yeah. pretty awesome too. So again, those are some people here just in Lincoln that have made this project, help this project become more successful. Yeah. And definitely are gonna be a huge part in getting us to, um, to that, that final funding amount for sure. But we definitely wanted to make sure that you guys all understand that um, we, we don't not appreciate everything you've done up to this point. Is we absolutely do, but uh, John and I can only extend our reach so far. And that's actually kind of why we're doing this video. It's right. a way of one to say thank you and to kind of recap where we're at and where we really would like to get. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we definitely like to see this thing stretch into some goals and get some of these promo cards out. Yeah. And I mean, I know John and I both want to play with the Fenris and the Animals yeah. really, really bad. <laughs> So I mean, we need you guys to help us get there. Yeah. We we uh, we want to we want to get Fenris and Animus in this alternate art form into our final decks. They, they're awesome. They're I mean, super you would cool expect looking. we've seen these cards for like two years and we'd be burned out. I I, I like playing our game. Absolutely. I want to keep playing yeah. our game. Yeah. So I want the, that's, yeah. that's I think that's something that uh, you see a lot of developers. They talk about their their games and there's some passion there, but over time it becomes just like a job and they kind of eh, whatever. Right. Not no we. We, if our game hits our table as a as a standard just yeah. game night game, sometimes more than other games. Yeah. Which I, I'm sometimes like, hey, you guys, we need to play some other games. And clearly, <laughs> we have some other games. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it does happen. Yeah, right? it does. I mean, it just happens. We 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 go, oh, let's draft tonight, or you know, and so right. it's quick and easy for us to grab our kit, and nobody has to learn a game, so we just go and we're, yeah. we're playing. You know, so that's kind of the cool thing about it. But uh, so the refer friend pro program is help you have some reasons to bring a friend in. Right. And in turn, help your friend have some reasons to bring another friend in. Yeah. And really, let's see how big we can make this thing. Let's see how successful it can be. I mean, I know we're leading up to Gen Con and everybody in the industry says, oh, this is the yeah, death we, week and we're We've been trouble. joking about that a lot. Like, yeah. What are some of the things we've learned from Kickstarter? Don't launch on June or July, unless you're a super large established yeah, exactly. company yeah, so, or name. So, so we, we've learned from our mistakes there too. We probably yeah. won't ever launch another Kickstarter in these months. Maybe yeah. May. Maybe yeah, May is the last yeah. cut. But, but uh, they yeah. come back maybe in like what October or something. Yeah, like yeah that. September October yeah. time frame. <laughs> yeah, so you know, so from there, um, you know, we we also wanted to be in the sake of full disclosure. We talked about the stretch goals being disclosed. Yeah. We we actually went ahead and showed all the cards that are in. 
the battle kit, right? So yeah, our, our, oh yeah. our website. Up, so many updates. Yeah, yeah. So so <laughs> sometime in the last couple of weeks, I don't remember when now, but uh, we went ahead and, and put all of our uh, individual cards that are inside the battle kit out on our website on our card gallery. So you could go out to Solaria.com, go to our card gallery, and start browsing every single card that exists inside of the battle kit. Yep. So there's a couple of cool things about that. Number one, you get to see all the cool artwork that we've put into the game, which, sure. which our reviewers have obviously talked a lot about. Yeah, right? in fact, uh, and, and, and to some extent, if you were a backer already, uh, you saw a lot of those cards, well, all of them on the, uh, the print play. Right. But a number of you, I mean, maybe didn't have time to do the print play. Right. And it's just a, a nice, convenient way. Hey, I want to know what those cards look like. Plus, they're in, they're in full high-res glory there yeah, on the website, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you can really get a chance to dig into some of that artwork. Yeah. And, and John and I, as we go forward, we'll start talking a little bit more, not in this video, but in future videos, kind of talking about the artwork and some of the cool things we like about each card. Yeah. Uh, but we'll also kind of come full circle on that and start spoiling some new cards in that process, too. Um, so we've talked about draft play. One other thing I want to talk about, though, mechanically that we added is Faction Wars. And, and Faction Wars is a two versus two multiplayer mode. Right. And so in two versus two, let's say you and I were playing, we're going to play against two other guys, John. Basically, if you wanted to play the Cynthia and I'd grab my Cynthia deck, we'd sit down as a standard 60-90 deck construction system and we'd play against two Jotun players. Right on. And, and we'd have 50 health points. <laughs> John knows this. I'm just... I'm just uh, Having a conversation. I'm with acting like here. I'm your, you guys. So, <laughs> so really, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> but uh, so so we start off with 50 health, and the goal is for us to then attack our opponent and reduce their health pool from 50 to zero. And John and I are working together as a team to do that. Yeah, it's an interesting format because uh, we haven't talked a lot about type ones, but type one combatants really um, they, they and type one sites in faction wars. Neither one of either one of us can have it, not the other one. So in other words, like if I play an Animus Vox, you can't have an Animus Vox. Right. So that's some pretty cool stuff going on there. Um, you know that that mode does require another battle kit, though. So I want to preface that that is a mode that will require somebody bringing a second battle kit to, to the table because one battle kit is only enough cards to make two constructed decks right. and one from each faction. So you would need another battle kit to be able to do right. two decks right. from the same right. faction. Um, and then from there. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about um, art and how great art is, but one of our artists got featured, right? Oh, this yeah, week? yeah. So yeah. we have a number of really awesome artists, um, and yeah, we're biased, but we can <laughs> be. Uh, Wiz, Wiz Yakuza, who did a number of our earlier cards. Um, we try to keep, ta uh, keep track of all of our artists and like to promote them whenever we can. And on the way over here, I actually saw a feature of Wiz's uh, there's a Deadpool. That's all, awesome. Yeah, which is great timing, right? Because right. it's like the movie's coming out. Yeah. Um, he was he was featured for his uh, superhero uh, artwork on his, uh, it was a comic art site. Okay, so it's really cool. That is cool. And so then the last thing we're going to talk about, and we don't want to dive too much into detail with the Exolarian Protoan, but we definitely want to spoil them a little bit because that's the eighth stretch goal. Oh yeah. So so the Exolarian and the Protoan, <laughs> which may pop over my face or yeah, in yeah. between. Probably us. probably in between <laughs> us, like somewhere in here. But yeah. um, basically, the Exolarian and Protoan are. The two other factions that are <laughs> uh, right here <laughs> that exist in the next battle kit, and and uh, <laughs> so from a lore perspective, they're obviously very very different. Um, we we don't want to spend a ton of time digging into the lore here, right. but basically, just a like a quick thirty seconds or forty seconds about the lore between those two factions. Sure. So so the Exolarians were the previous Solarians that were kicked out of the Jotun society early on, right after the fracture. They've been living in the wastelands the for almost a millennium now. And they, they've really uh, adapted to their environment, and as the planets healed, they've continued to change and whatnot. And so there's a lot of mutants. There's a lot of uh, uh, of the Exolarians that rely on like uh, prototype tech and old technology, so cybernetic implants to stay alive. Mm -hmm. They uh, also have dabbled into maybe like a cult or magic type, mm -hmm. you know, stuff. So supernatural, mm -hmm. alternate dimensional type stuff. And so they're very unique and diversified as far as the faction goes, mm -hmm. and then that leads into the fact that they've been living in the waste for so long, way out into the waste, that right. they're the first faction that really experienced the Pratoan, right. which sets up their battle kit for Battle Kit 2, the Reign of Terror. But the Pratoan, when the fracture occurred, released the toxins into the environment, it, t it kicked in like an evolutionary gene in some right. of the, the wildlife. And now they started to rapidly evolve, and they kind of adopt this hive mind. And it's kind of the planet's natural defense mechanism. It's like mankind, you cause the planet to crack, um, we're, we're wiping you out and resetting right. the ecosystem or ecology, if you will, sure. of the planet. So 
They, while the Pratoan have uses for Salarium and they like Salarium, but it's for completely different reasons. And uh, they're basically just going after the other factions, the man, basically mankind, right. to wipe them off the planet. Right. And so the Exilarians were the first to come across this hyper aggressive monster uh, race, faction right, right, race, right, if faction, you will. Yeah. yeah. So from a design perspective, as John alluded to a little bit, the the Exilarians, and we're gonna spoil the Spirit Warrior right here. <laughs> uh, Again, yeah, about the, right there. The Exilarian is a guerrilla faction, and so they they operate definitely um, from a guerrilla tactics yeah, perspective. Yeah. So so they're very difficult to remove from the game. They're very difficult to maybe get advantage over. Um, but when you do, they obviously they, they, they do crumble a little bit. So that's the beauty yeah. of them, right? Their strength yeah. is the guerrilla tactics and their ability. But the, the downside of them is is that they're probably the least defensive of all the factions. Yeah, they, they're, they can be real fragile. If you can get to them, they're fragile. Yeah. They're, you know, every faction has, I talked about this earlier in a different video, yeah. where there's like a main branch and off branches, so every faction has like a main branch or a main tactic, right. if you will, but then they have these offshoots to give a little bit of diversity within each faction. Right. The Exilarian have a lot of diversity in, right. in that sense, but their main thing is control. So any ways to interrupt you, to shut you down, so to really control the flow of the game, the game, that's what they do. Work on their terms, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how it's going to work. They're, an Exilarian player is going to be able to choose how you, he wants you to play. Yep. And that's a pretty powerful tactic for sure right. in the game. But the, the Protoan are completely different. And, and so the Protoan are actually completely different from any of the other factions as well. Um, you know, there's only so many different ways you can approach what you would call like an aggro faction, a faction right. that's really aggro heavy. And the Protoan are definitely an aggro heavy faction, but they're done in a, a swarm mentality. So yeah. they, they don't have a lot of really big individual things, but they have a lot of really little things that when combined create a pretty monstrous <laughs> thing. And they're very primal in nature, so they, they, they don't even have any regard for themselves. I mean, in that sense, they, they're... Uh, they'll eat their young. They'll, yeah. they'll, you know, I mean, they'll, they'll anything to advance their cause, which is just white mass consumption. Everything else, yeah. Out. yeah. So the Protoan are a pretty cool <laughs> faction from a design yeah. perspective because uh, they, they offer that. And so we're spoiling Serana here, and Serana is definitely not uh, a combatant that follows that swarm mentality, but she is probably one of the most aggressive combatants in the game, and right. it's very important because their aggression is part of their design. So, yeah. so aggressively. Their being aggressive is, is key to how the Protoans operate. And so if you're an aggressive player, yeah. this is going to be the perfect faction for you yeah, because they're like going to be aggressive. Yeah. And, and while we were talking about they're a hive mind and there's a lot, there's a lot of little guys that kind of do one thing, they do have their champions, right. if you will, sure. their elites if you play like MMOs. And, and Serana is kind of like, like that one elite. of the early elites. In our, in our game terms, we call it a type one. Right. So she's a personality, if you will, within the system. She's a maybe one that has a, was a, you know, every evolution uh, strain, sometimes it, it, it not only does it evolve and it, it has more that follow it, right. or it's just a variation. And, and Serana, at this point, is just kind of a variation or a deviant, yep. uh, a deviation from the, the typical evolutionary right. chain on the Pertoan side. But that doesn't mean in time that there won't be other uh, Pertoans that kind of start to evolve into and they, and they kind of claim territories, right? Like so, yeah. in our in our Pertoans, I mean, Serana is the huntress of the Ashfall Plains. Yeah. So that clearly is is showing a new location to our our uh, fans. I mean, the Ashfall Plains may right. not be a card that exists right now, but it's definitely a card that probably exists inside the the world of Solaria. Right, right. And uh, you'll you'll see that in future expansions. And so this kind of leads into showing you what the future of Battle for Solaria looks like. And we're definitely ready to do a lot more of this, but we need your help to get there. And so. Right. Stretching on this Kickstarter to to the, the eighth stretch goal and the battle kit is a huge proponent to moving this game forward at a faster rate. So right. this again falls back into why we need your help getting more awareness and more people aware of Battle for Slayer because there's so much that we want to bring that's yeah. super exciting and completely changes right. the components of this game and how it plays. And and that's just scratching the surface for us. I mean it's really just getting into things. We're well prepared to expand out with our expansion packs, which we call command packs and and that'll offer even more cards for more deck building options, right. more cube drafting options, bigger drafts. I mean, all this stuff is all possible because of expanding the game. Right. And so our, our Kickstarter success today and in the future is part of uh, getting this game to a point that uh, rivals other card games on the market for sure. So I hope you guys had a, you know, enjoyed this video and an opportunity for us to, to 
talk to you a little bit more candidly about where we're at and how much we appreciate what you've done for us so far because we certainly do. Right. But but uh, we definitely need your help in order to make this thing even more successful and create an even bigger picture for all of our fans. And and please keep the feedback coming. John and I are, are, are huge proponents of listening to that feedback. We love getting it from you guys. We love interacting with you guys. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the conversation that occurs back and forth. Um, you can get on our on Board Game Geek even, and we have forums there, start discussions about the game. We'd love right. to see that happen. If you want to talk about fan fiction, I mean, and you want questions, you have questions about this character or that character, I mean, John and I can both sit down with you, and John in particular can talk to you a little bit about what makes this character sure. unique. So, sure. Uh, I think that pretty much covers this video and what we wanted to cover for today. Yeah, you know, so it, was, it was just kind of an impromptu. We were so excited over the last few days. Yeah. We just wanted to say you know, thank you and keep, keep it up. And uh, we're kind of in it for the long haul, so I hope you are too. Yeah, <laughs> go Cynthia. That's my line. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're not going to be the Joe team? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, thanks so much again. Appreciate it, and uh, keep it, keep up the great work, and let's uh, let's get this thing as far as we can go. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.